Assalamu alaikum. Today's lecture is regarding the biomechanical preparation of root canal system. After gaining the access into the pulp through the excess cavity, the cleaning and shaping of the root canal will be performed by the endodontic instrument. Before the instrumentation of the canal, the length of the tooth should be determined by a step called working length determination. Working length determination will be given to you separately in another lecture. Endodontic treatment consists of three steps. The cleaning and shaping of root canal system. In this step, the pulp tissues, the necrotic tissues, and the necrotic dentine will be removed using the endodontic instruments. The second step is the disinfection in which chemicals will be used in order to kill the microbes in the root canal system. And the final step is the obturation which is filling the root canal space. Cleaning comprises the removal of all potentially pathogenic contents from the root canal system and the shaping is referring to the establishment of a three-dimensional progressive access into the canal and creating an apical preparation which will permit the final obturation instrument and the materials to fit easily. Mechanical objectives of root canal preparation The root canal preparation should develop a continuously tapering cone The prepared canal should have a funnel shape with the smallest diameter at the apex and the diameter of the canal should increase gradually in the coronal direction. The natural curvature of the canal should be preserved. Careful and considerate approach should be followed in curved canal in order to preserve the natural curvature. Otherwise, complication may happen in the apical region, resulting in improper cleaning and obturation of the apical region. Proper and careful approach during canal preparation should be followed in order to avoid the complications that might happen in the apical region, like ledge formation, apical transportation, as shown in the attached picture. The apical opening should be kept as small as possible. Biologic objectives of root canal preparation. Endodontic instrumentation should only be confined to the root canal space. It means that the endodontic instrument should only be used inside the root canal and it should not pass the periapical foramen into the periapical region. All the infected pulp tissue, bacteria and their byproducts should be removed from the root canal. Necrotic debris should not be forced periapically. Sufficient space for intracanal medicaments and irrigants should be created. The root canal space should be convenient in order to allow proper flushing and irrigation of the root canal system. Different movements of endodontic instruments. Reaming. Reaming is commonly done by the use of reamers, although files can also be used. It involves the insertion of the endodontic instrument into full length, followed by clockwise rotation. The second endodontic movement is the filing. The term filing indicates push-pull motion of an instrument and this method is commonly used for canal preparation in which the instrument is pushed inside the canal to full length then it's pulled out. Combination of reaming and filing can also be used in root canal preparation. In this technique 
File is inserted with a quarter turn clockwise and apically direct the pressure and then is subsequently withdrawn by a pulling out motion. Balloon force technique. In this technique, the instrument is first inserted into the canal by moving it clockwise with one quarter turn. Then to cut the dentine, the file is rotated anti-clockwise and at the same time the file is pushed apically to prevent the file from moving out of the canal. Finally, the file is removed by rotating the file in a clockwise direction and at the same time pulling the instrument out of the canal. The movements of the balance force technique are shown in the attached picture. Watch wending motion. Watch wending is reciprocating back and forth clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation of the instrument. The rotation of the instrument is also assisted by light apical pressure in order to move the file deeper into the canal. Watch winding motion is useful for opening tight or calcified canal. Basic principles of canal instrumentation. There should be a straight line access to the canal orifices and this can be achieved by removing any overhang dentine lying close to the uh, canal orifices. Files are always worked within a canal filled with irrigant. Irrigation solution should always be used during the instrumentation process in order to remove the cutting debris and to keep the canal wet. Exploration of the orifice of the canal should always be done with a smaller size file. During the instrumentation, the instrument should be used in the sequential order without skipping sizes. For example, if we start the preparation of the canal with size 15 file and we plan to enlarge the canal up to size 40, we will need to use all the sizes in between 15 and 40 and none of them should be skipped. After each insertion and removal of the file during the instrumentation process, the flutes of the file should be thoroughly cleaned and inspected. During the instrumentation process, sometimes the canal becomes blocked with the cutting debris and in order to reopen the canal, a small size file like size 15 or size 10 can be used and inserted into the full length of the canal in order to reopen the canal. This process is called recapitulation. Recapitulation is regularly done to loosen debris by returning to full working length. Recapitulation is a process of removing the cutting debris packed into the apex by a smaller diameter file that's inserted to full length of the canal. Recapitulation ensures the total canal depredment and prevents the blockage of the canal with the cutting debris. Techniques for root canal preparation Basically, there are two approaches used for biomechanical preparation. Either starting at the apex with fine instrument and working up to the orifice with a progressively larger instrument. And this technique is called step back technique in which we start the preparation of the apical part of the canal followed by the coronal part of the canal. The second approach, starting at the orifice with larger instrument and working up to the apex with a smaller instrument and this is called crown down technique in which we prepare the coronal part of the canal followed by the preparation of the apical part of the canal. Standardized preparation technique, conventional technique. This technique is adequate for preparing the canals that are relatively straight and tapered. Before starting the instrumentation, 
The working length of the tooth should be determined. It's also important to select the initial apical file. The initial apical file is the smallest endodontic file that shows resistance upon the insertion to full working length of the canal. After locating the canal orifice, the operator should start inserting the endodontic instruments into the canal, starting from the smaller file and in a sequential order. For example, inserting size 6 followed by 8, 10, 15 and so on, until we reach the file that shows resistance upon the insertion to full working length of the canal and this file will be considered as the initial apical file. Reamers of increasing sizes are used sequentially to enlarge the apical part of the canal. Then the coronal two-thirds of the canal will be prepared. In this slide, I will give you an example for the preparation of the root canal using the conventional technique. In this example, I will assume that the initial apical file is size 20. To prepare the apical third of the canal, three files that are larger than the size of the initial apical file will be used. File size 25, 30 and 35 will be used to prepare the apical third of the canal. And they will be inserted to full working length. To prepare the coronal part of the canal, larger files, 40, 45, and 50, will be used to enlarge the coronal two-thirds of the canal. These larger files will be inserted only into the coronal two-thirds of the canal, and lateral pressure will be applied during the withdrawal of the file. This example shows us the importance of the determination of the initial apical file and the sizes of the files that are used in the preparation of the canal will depend on the size of the initial apical file. Step back technique for root canal preparation. This technique is useful for the preparation of cave canal. It's composed of two phases. Phase 1. Phase 1 involves the preparation of the apical construction of the canal. In this phase, the most apical millimeter of the canal will be prepared. The first step is to establish the working length. Then insert the first instrument into the canal with watch winding motion to full working length. Remove the instrument and irrigate the canal. Place the next larger size file to the working length in similar manner and irrigate the canal. Repeat the process until size 25 file, which is considered the master apical file, and recapitulate the canal. The second phase of step back technique. In phase 2, we will continue the preparation of the canal by using larger file. But in this stage, we will start to subtract 1 mm from the working length as we increase the size of the file. So we will need to place the next file, which is file size 30, it comes after 25, but the working length has to be reduced by 1 mm. The file will be inserted into the canal with watch winding motion, then it will be removed after circumferential filing, and this should be followed by irrigation and recapitulation. Repeat the same procedures, but as I have said, each time you increase the size of the endodontic file, you will need to subtract another millimeter from the working length. So this is a process to be continued until you finish the preparation of the whole canal, up to the coronal part. 
Finally, reinstrumentation of the root canal is done by the master apical file, which is file number 25, with push-pull motion to achieve a smooth taper form for the root canal. This picture explains the instrumentation using the step-back technique. And as you see, the master apical file, which is file size 25, will be inserted inside the canal up to full working length. While the next file, file size 30, will be inserted about 1 mm shorter than the full working length. File size 35 will be inserted about 2 mm shorter than the full working length. File size 40 will be inserted about 3 mm shorter than the working length and so on. Technique of crown down the preparation. In this technique, the first step will be the preparation of the coronal part of the canal. Then it's followed by the preparation of the apical third of the canal. The crown down approach begins with larger gate gliden. And after using this, Subsequent smaller diameter gate gliden will be used, and at the same time, we will increase the working length. So, as we decrease the size of the endodontic instrument, we will increase the working length by about one millimeter until we complete the coronal flaring using the gate gliden. Frequent irrigation with sodium hypochlorite and recapitulation with a smaller file is important to prevent canal blockage. After establishing coronal and midroot enlargement, explore the canal and establish the working length with a small instrument. Subsequently introduce progressively smaller files deeper into the canal in sequential order and prepare the apical part of the canal. Mechanical preparation of root canal system is usually assisted by endodontic irrigation solutions. The functions of irrigation solutions are as follow. Opening the dentinal tubule by removing the smear layer. They act as a lubricant to facilitate the instrumentation. Dissolve necrotic tissues, germicidal and antibacterial effects, bleaching action, removal of debris from lateral and accessory canals. This table provides a useful summary for all the information that you need to know about the irrigant used during endodontic therapy. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. I would like to thank you very much for your time and attention and best regards.